Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about slipper clutches within radio control cars. Now the way that we're going to do this is we're going to first talk about their specific role and purpose within a radio control model car. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this exact example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cover off of this 110 scale monster truck to reveal the transmission beneath it. And under this plate is going to be the slipper clutch. We're going to take a look at the components of that slipper clutch and exactly Exactly how that slipper clutch works. Now we're not going to be talking about tuning within this specific video. If you want to see exactly how you tune a slipper clutch on your RC car, then let me know in the comments section below. In the last video that we did, you guys said that you want to see a video done on front and rear differentials. We're going to have that video slotted right in queue, and it's probably going to come out in the beginning couple weeks of January. And if you guys want to see the tuning video on slipper clutches, that will come out shortly after that. Now let's get started and talk about the purpose and role and function that we get out of a slipper clutch in a radio control car. A slipper clutch's primary function within our radio control car is to absorb power. Now the way that it is able to absorb power is by having material that causes friction and then slips. So imagine having two pieces of material and they come together like a brake would and it's pressed with a bunch of pressure to keep them locked in place. But if you drive one with a little bit more power than the other one can handle, it begins to slip. It is that slippage that allows us to build heat. That heat is what is going to absorb power that is passed from our motor to our drivetrain. So imagine that a slipper clutch's main function is to just absorb power within your drivetrain so that you don't put too much power to your wheels. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there's two primary reasons why you'd want to do that. Now, the first reason you'd want to do that is if you don't want to accelerate so aggressively, you want to lighten up the acceleration acceleration, you can use your slipper clutch to the advantage in order to reduce that amount of power that's making its way to the wheels. The way that you do that is you'd set up your slipper clutch so that it does slip when you're accelerating. This way you can control the amount of acceleration that you'd have with that specific radio control model vehicle. Now it can be done if you are running on the road or if you're running on loose surfaces such as something that you'd see off-road. You would have to have a specific setup for each one of those conditions. Now it's not my preference to control my slipper clutch so that I can reduce the amount of acceleration that I get out of my radio control model vehicle. The reason I say that is because I see it as not an effective and efficient solution. We gotta keep in mind that anytime you're using that slipper clutch, you are creating heat. And the heat between those materials is going to wear it out quicker. It is a wear item on our radio control model vehicle. And if that is absorbing heat, that means your motor is producing the power that you are just absorbing in a different type of component there. I don't see that as efficient. My preference to absorb that power would be to not have the power to begin with. What we can do is we can go into our speed control, program the amount of power output, that we're getting from that speed control to the motor so that we don't have significant or aggressive acceleration. This is my preference. And you can also go into your transmitter and select a channel in order to dial in how much power you want. If you are on a road, running on a road, you can have a significant amount of power being used or acceleration being used. And then if you go and take your radio control vehicle off road, you can then hit a switch or a channel within your radio control transmitter in order to dial back the power. It's not that easy with a slipper clutch because you're going to have to go in and change its tune and you have to do that mechanically rather than through software or through a simple radio switch. That is just my personal preference when it comes to the first function that we're talking about here. Now the second reason why we would want to be able to go and control the amount of power that goes through our transmission is if we end up seeing a peak or abrupt change in torque requirement or power requirement or if you're changing speed in a significant manner. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, imagine if you were to use a ramp so that you can send your radio control car to the moon. We see a lot of guys who are able to jump very high. It looks awesome, it's really cool, but it can be hard on the car. And for those guys that are doing it, they have it set up in such a way so that they can absorb the power. Where do you want to absorb the power? Well, imagine if you go and you're jumping that ramp and then you see your car is not gonna land on its wheels. A lot of guys have the skill to go and 
jam that throttle so that they can position the car in the perfect spot to land. Well, when you jam the throttle, your wheels and everything is going to be at a high RPM. And as soon as those tires make contact with the ground, it's also creating a lot of stress throughout the entire drive line of your radio control car. This is where I see a slipper clutch being a perfect fit and solution for this problem. For the most part, the drivetrains in radio control vehicles are able to handle a lot of power. I've not really seen a radio control vehicle that had a component within its drivetrain fail because of the amount of power that you're putting in it. However, I have seen radio control components throughout the drivetrain fail because it's been under some type of shock load. And that is because of the jumping or even when you're going through grass and it's jumping up in the ground and getting air and then coming back down and landing. It is these points that we would like to absorb those spikes in torque on the whole entire driveline through our slipper clutch. A well set up slipper clutch for that type of driving style will be able to smooth out all the changes in power as you're running the vehicle. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the components of a slipper clutch and how it exactly works. Now I've taken apart the clutch here on this 1 tenth scale monster truck to give you an idea as to exactly how this thing works. Here is a few of the components of this particular slipper clutch. We have a nut that fastens everything together. Right on that nut is going to be a spring. This is what applies the pressure to the clutch. Here is one of the slipper plates of the clutch. And then lastly, what you have is the spur gear assembly. The way that the spur gear goes together is you fasten using these three screws, this plate that exists on the back of the gear. And on the back of the gear, you have all these little pieces pieces of material. There's three of them that make up the clutch here and it looks almost like a very very small brake pad and that's exactly what this component here does in order to create friction between those two components and that's where we're able to absorb all of that energy now the way this would work if we go and position this differently I'll remove the nut that fastens it down the spring that applies the pressure there is also a bearing that goes into the spur gear and that is important because the spur gear typically if there was no clutch would be spinning at the exact same rate that this input shaft would be spinning at. But because we're gonna create slippage, we're gonna have a difference in speed between the gear as well as our transmission. And that difference in speed is gonna be absorbed by that bearing. So there is where you're able to see how the bearing comes in handy here. So now we'll take a look at exactly how this works. And I've been losing these brake pads all the time. As soon as I took the thing apart, I had two of them missing. That took me about 10 minutes to find. So the way this is going to assemble, this plate would go right on the input side here. That's gonna butt up against this flange on the input side of the transmission. Now that flange would then go and butt up against the brake pad material that you see here. And as you would be able to tell from now what we have here, this spur gear is going to start rotating and we're gonna have this entire assembly rotating. And if this steel ring is rotating, that means our transmission is rotating. Now, if we end up causing shock within the system and we have our clutch set up correctly, what you're gonna get is a case where the gear starts to rotate, but the plate does not. The friction between those two components is what is going to produce the heat and absorb all of that extra power into these components. So now if we were to assemble it, we'd have to first start, you could see even the wear pattern on this ring. This is where it mates up to the transmission. You could see kind of the markings on it. However, this side has a nice ground ring into it, allowing us to see exactly how this gets installed. Obviously it has to go in this direction so that the pads would make contact again with it. The next part to install is to take our motor, move it out of the way, allow these this to go in. The first time I did it, I could not place this in without having the bearing out of the material. So now I have that set, then I'm able to position it correctly. The next component to go in would be our bearing. We could slide that bearing in place, locking it within the spur gear. Now we have those sitting in position. The next component that we would use would be this spring. And then the last component that's gonna seal the deal for us is going to be the tightening nut. And that's exactly how the clutch works. Well guys, that does it for this video on slipper clutches. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see what we're doing in 2021 to make this channel even better, I'll leave a link to our Patreon page in the description below. Now like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. It truly means a lot to me and I'll see you in the next one on Monday.